Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Winston. I'll be giving you your webinar here on basic starting packages of opening up Cougar for the first time. Again, my name is Kevin Winston. I'm from Cougar Mountain Software. Been with Cougar Mountain uh, for 14 years. I'm the senior trainer here. Uh, I'm the guy that usually does all the classes and goes out on site for most of our clients. Today's agenda, we'll be going through um, uh, getting started, the basics, uh, opening up the software, what to really actually uh, find, and finding your way around, and giving you some basic uh, tips uh, and how um, the uh, cosmetic of the software works. We'll do a Q&A at the end before we do our wrap-up. One of the first obstacles about any new software is learning how it's organized. So what I'm going to do is briefly go through on the um, pictures here to show you how the window itself is organized. If you're coming from Pro, our professional um, modules, into Denali, it's quite a big difference in the way of cosmetic. So what I'd like you to look at is some of the differences, and we will then, when we go live and I start showing you, I'll show you the how you can put it back, if you want, to the pro look, if you want to go back in time. First of all, open up the software. Pretty easy. When you start, you'll be using all programs, and then you'll be uh, clicking on Denali by um, uh, uh, Cougar Mountain. When you do that, you will be able to look and see a demonstration company right off the bat. Please keep this because you can practice, like you'll see here in the picture, you'll have your demonstration up there, and it's a good way of just looking at the software before you plunge in to making your own company. I know you're excited about it and you want to get started, but sometimes it's better to make a visual look at the demonstration company. What we're looking at here is the menu bar. Now, the menu bar basically is for people that are transferring from Pro to Denali. In this particular case, the words are still there, just like it was in Pro. But we do have cosmetic changes. You can see that the modules now have their own color system, and that uh, you have all your other uh, quick openings right there in front of you. And you don't have to hit File and go down to your particular modules. The next bar we'll be looking at will be the toolbar. This is the one that's on the bottom of your screen. This is really for Mr. Bill Gates and the Microsoft people, and you have all your programs on the bottom there. Now, I suggest when you go to class is that you open up every one of your modules in the morning that you're going to be using and keep them down there. Then that way you won't have to see the interface opening up every time that you change from one module to another. Over here would be your normal uh, calcu uh, calculations and other softwares that you have open at the same time. The navigation pane here is divided into three areas. The first area is that words again up on the top of the, of the software. The second part is the training mode. This is an actual module that's helping you learn the icons here. So if you haven't opened up your stock, in this particular case, stock, stock maintenance, and learning what the icon is, this will teach you. So you can go down to each one of the headers that you have up here and learn where are the icons or how to use the icons. The arrows are a flow method where it goes from one side to the other to your final post. You'll see this when you open up things is that it takes you to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So it gives you a nice little flow chart and you finish off at the end of your line. The information area is down towards the bottom of the pane. Now that information tells you usually what's what kind of integration is going on between each one of the modules. In this particular case, we have the sales module it integrated to accounts payable for taxes, accounts receivable for customers, general ledger for making <clears throat> your postings clear, and inventory. Notice on the two, we have two columns, one for order entry 
and one for point of sale. They are independent from each other. So you can have order entry on, but point of sale off. Down the bottom of the R frame is what they call the status bar. This tells you the date, the time, who is the identification person inside. That would be you or your clerks. What batch you have open. And it has a numeric or cap locks. That's why the red is around, because it's missing. Cap locks are off. If cap locks were on, you would see the word cap, C-A-P. Next comes the command buttons. Every time you open up a window in any module for vendors or customers or inventory, you will have always command buttons on the side. Some people call them action buttons. This is what you're going to be doing. So there's when you first open up, if you can't write on the windows, most likely your edit button is not turned on. That should be the first button that you would actually turn on so you can now edit or put other items in or change them. The word find will take it to a lookup. We will see that in a second. A lookup uh, venture and using the arrows on the left and on the right, you can go forward or you can go backwards. So in other words, if this is your first uh, customer here, if I click on this, it'll ask me any changes. Do you want to save them? Yes, but it goes directly to the second customer. I don't have to save and then look up again another find just to find the second person. It'll keep it in order. When you first come on and it's blank, then you can just click on that arrow and it'll bring up your first customer without looking up. The next and probably the hardest uh, out there, unless you have your general ledger in front of you, is setting up codes. Codes are what directs the GL for the debits and credits that have to be made when you start using your software. When you make a sale, revenue is the credit. The bank or, or the on hand is the debit. So Cougar needs to know this and what numbers you want to use, and that's why you have all these codes here. Transaction codes, type codes, terms, they are directing basically for the general ledger. Next is the transaction batches itself. When you are uh, bought Cougar Mountain, you were asked how many licenses you want. If you have more than one license because you have two or three or four different users, etc. Then at that time, when you make batches, each person can go into the same module but as different batches. Changing the batch from a supervisor with the time on to actual people's names will help you and direct you to the right batch that you were working on. If you're working singly, then this also is your organized. Maybe it's a batch that you want to post at the end of the month versus what I want to post on Friday. So you can, when you label those batches, you know exactly what the batch means. This is the lookup feature. And what's nice about the lookup feature is every column, when it opens up, it will always open up with the first column, in this case, the number. Then you can look up, though, by name, by contact, by phone number, and even total due. This is what makes Cougar paperless is that I can look up bills or who owes me by looking it up here rather than running a report. That way I can do it much quicker. When you click on the header, you'll see the search for the header up on top. So if I click on name, it would say search for name. If I click on this example, click on contact, it now says search for contact. It only also gives you lots of different dates. When you open up, and we will, I'll show you when we get into the actual live part of it, is that you can change dates very easily because maybe an invoice date is going to be different than a general ledger date. I might have an invoice date, this example is 05, but I want to put it back in July as my expenditures. Cougar gives you that opportunity. It changes the due date and the discount date. This is coming from AP by what your dates you put up here in the top and the bottom, the second area.
The other features that are out there is once you have your ledger going, then you can drill down. So you can come down in, into areas like the audit trail, but it's electronically where then you can tab onto that and it brings up the report because why? I have one side of the, uh, of the posting, but I'm looking up for the second side. Where was the second side when I posted it? So again, up here, these are the words that we have, and I was telling you that you can set up, and so instead of hitting the shortcuts that you see here, you'll be like pro, and you would come in, and you'd be making different instances from here. Again, I can open up this part of the icon and gives me the selected uh, demo act in this particular case. So when I come into areas that I want to look at, like uh, setting up a fiscal calendar, I can use the icon itself, set up when I first start, or I could go up to organization and come down to the word in uh, calendar. They're both the same. There's no difference between it. So it's just getting used to using an icon or using the words whichever you prefer. Now, Cougar will automatically, once your company is made, will actually go through as if it was a workflow, will actually do it for you. All right, now remember down the bottom here is all your programs that are open. You can see I've got a Chrome open, I've got a calculator open, and because this is Windows 7, it shows you what you have open. If you are a split screen person that has many different screens, you can actually open up new instances of the same and have it open twice. Why would I want one? Because one is on one screen and one is on another screen. Now think about this as batches. You can have one batch open in one screen and another batch open in another screen. You must have the licenses to do this. When opening up simple things of putting in customers and filling in the boxes, you also have the ability of using the lookup afterwards. So once one is in, then you can just make sure that all the other marks are being put in here. Now using your lookup, again, as you can see, it has search by the number comes up first because that's the first column. Then name, then contact, and total due. We also now have where you highlight one or the name, set up name, and you can now click on contains where you put the word, and I like to use the, because I don't know how many the's I have, and then you have two of them that have the in it. So now it has a little search by the words if that's faster for you. Can you use it on uh, contact where you might have a bunch of mics and you put down mic? Yeah, it won't find Michael, it will find Mike though. So be careful about the search and make sure it's the right thing you're trying to find. Showing the codes here, and we have lots in AR different codes, but showing the codes again, it just shows you the general ledger. So each one of these, when I pull one up, is really directing where in the general ledger it should go. Now the general ledger would be the first module after I've set up my company of making sure it's there so that way I can use the lookups to find the numbers I want to put in each one of those codes. It's much easier to do it that way than on the fly. But if I wanted to, I could do something what we call on the fly where I can change this if I wanted to. Look over here at the side, see what's open, and now I can add because I want to have a brand new one. And I would hit the word, in this case, new, and put in my number because I'm adding into a brand new number. Then fill in the information. When I get done, you can see the command button change from save to save and select, and it would bring us right into the AR code with your new number. And this works in inventory, it works in AP, it works in all the other modules out there. Changing dates, I use that AP in this particular case because there's a lot more dates than most of them. When I come in and take a look at my dates, there's the four. 
So if I'm, I'm putting in or entering a bill in for somebody and I pick that out, now I can adjust my dates by picking today's date as when I want to enter it or the date of the invoice itself. But I want to enter it in on, as an expense one on July 31st. So now I'm changing the dates where I keep the invoice date, but I want to make sure it's under the expenses of July. So I'm using the periods here. And that's your choice. Changing dates are pretty easy. You have three different ways of doing it. The first one is when you enter in or the column of the transaction, you actually have change local, local meeting module, the dates here. And here I can then put in the date what I want. And when I click OK, that way when I open up any type of transaction, when I first open it up, see, it carries that date right there. Notice down here on the bottom again, on the bottom of the screen, you'll see 7.15 is the date. That's why it's the status bar. Batch controls are the same way. When I come in and I have my batch control on, when batch control on here, I can pick out which batch I want because I referred it to it. It's very easy to do when you set up a batch. You write in anything that would be useful for you to know what this batch is about. When I save it, I'm already looking at the bottom. I'm already looking in that batch. But if I want to change batches or I'm coming in for the first time, when I go to batch control, you can see it's very easy to see. This way it keeps me organized. So even if I was on a uh, multiple batch but just a single person because I'm in charge of accounts receivable, I can have many batches open. I just write down what it's there for. It's like an in and out box on your computer. Transaction codes that are within the codes themselves are the action to your AR code. So when you open it up, it's asking you, what are you doing? Are you charging a customer? Are you receiving a payment? These numbers at the beginning is telling it to add or subtract from the statement. You can have many different ones. The easiest one is to look at payments. You can have a credit card payment. You can have set up a payment by check with a check number, electronic finance. So that way you can have each one. The credit card And so you can separate those credit cards if you want. One of the reasons is, is that if a customer calls back later and says, well, I put it on my credit card, then you can sit there and tell her, well, you put it on the MasterCard versus just, well, what credit card did you do? Because you have to reverse the, the, the order. And the last thing I want to show you is the drill down. We all have looked at page after page after page of audit trails. Well, this is much easier. This is the interface coming in. Well, that's coming in. It only takes about, about a minute. This is, you can keep it this way if you want. This is for those pro thinking about coming into Denali. This is what the pro looks like, and you can keep that image if you want. There's no interface like what we're trying to do with general ledger. So you can see it's quite a big difference because of cosmetics, because we're trying to have everybody use the icons. In the future, you'll be able to use your smartphones with all these icons and do your work running around with your pad or your iPhone. The account maintenance itself, when you bring up an account, you then can look at you can then look at the a particular account 
and drill down to that. Clicking on the word edit, going over to the detail history, any one of these that you see here, and I'll pass this up, you can spread it out. So you can see that somebody forgot to put in lots of uh, numbers here. So if a customer calls and says, yes, I made, a, I made a payment, you then can open these up and actually look at the payments and the posting. So in this particular example, we can see that there is the money going into the bank and, of course, it's reducing the AR of the customer. So, so that's it. So you can see that even though that the check number wasn't put on it, then at least they can come back and you can see that it's a balanced transaction. And that's what the drop downs do. So you can go in here, open up any one, and take a look at it very quick and easy and see the other side of the of your entry and of course the entry with the numbers on. This is good especially for AP when it comes to purchase orders versus uh, the invoices versus uh, the reference numbers. Now we'll take any questions you might have. Doesn't look like there's any questions, so we will uh, have this recorded so you can go back and take a look at it, especially if you're just about ready to come into Cougar Mountain. Might be nice to look at it. So thank you very much for your time and hope to see you at the next webinar. Bye now.